Hi everyone, welcome to the Mindful Place Summit. Today we have Rusty Keeler, and he's a natural placescape designer and author who for nearly 30 years has traveled the world designing outdoor play environments and speaking about the benefits and beauty of saying yes to children's play. Described as a cross between Mr. Rogers and Jerry Garcia, Rusty is the author of multiple books on play and playscapes, including the brand new Adventures in Risky Play, What is Your Yes? He's the co-finder of the social justice initiative called the Just Play Project, which works to support all children's rights to play. Rusty lives beside a creek with his family in Itaca. Did I say it right? <laughs> no. What it's is it? Itaca. Itaca. Well, welcome, Rusty. Yes. You know, I didn't slay, slay your name, but I definitely slayed the city you're from. But I'm so excited to, to hear more about what you do. And can you tell us about your background and, and what you actually do? Sure, sure. So... I come through, I come to play through the design uh, field. Um, so I grew up drawing and building models and, and loving art and went to school for industrial design. And my first job out of school was doing playground equipment. And that's where I kind of really started to understand play, learn about play, love play, and um, also then realized that I love designing for play. So that kind of began my career way back in my 20s. And I worked out in Olympia, Washington. And then I worked at a sister company in the Netherlands. And that's when I was in Europe, kind of my ideas just like opened up to the play possibilities that environments could provide for children. Uh, more than just equipment, but really the idea of experience and the whole, the whole environment and nature and, uh, you know, hills and berry bushes and, you know, sand and water and mud and mess. And it's more than just the play equipment. I started reflecting on my own childhood, kind of the places that were important to me, um, fields behind my house that I played in all the different seasons of the year. And then I felt like, all right, I want to, these are the kind of environments I believe that children need this connection to nature so i came back from europe and kind of started doing that for a while and then they kind of just went from there of teaming up with great folks to design natural playscapes and then i got interested more in this adventure play and risky play stuff too so i'm weaving it all together yeah i'd love yeah. to hear more about um the benefits with kids and nature from your perspective yeah well <laughs> we <laughs> we all live on this planet and I feel like, you know, the backyard or the nature, the playground or the childcare center's yard is, is more than a playground. It really is an introduction to the outside world and the natural world. And, you know, we are all earthlings on this planet. And I believe, you know, as long as there's been children and humans, we've been connecting to the world, the earth. And I believe it's important to still, still do that. And I feel like nature, the woods, the creek are some of the best places to connect children to and to, you know, for them to learn and grow and experience the world around them, the world inside of them. And you see similarities of, you know, the swirl of the, of the sunflower with kind of the swirl, the patterns of the universe and leaves and the veins of leaves. And I feel like children are the ultimate explorers. Um, they're exploring a planet in outer space, right? They are literally doing that. And they're asking all the great questions that great scientists ask of why do things look the way they do? Why do they live the way they do? Why do they die? What, you know, what happens in the full life? And that's why I believe that we want to put children right in the middle of full life experiences to so connect beautiful. their hearts and spirits, yeah. I really like how you've connected your childhood experience to now shaping that and what you want to bring to the world and share that it's it's connecting back to the roots right and establishing yeah. the roots and i have to share that i have checked out some of your youtube videos and i just i love it because it's, they're very oh, playful you. right you know your child's coming in and showing on the tire swing and i'm like oh there comes a risky play it gets me excited because you know we talk about and i'll let you share about the benefits of risky play but um understanding that that's a really important piece of development and that we as educators sometimes Put a block onto that and it's because we're concerned that oh i might fail as a parent or an educator if this child gets hurt 
but I'd like you to kind of talk about the benefits of risky play and how we can say yes more um, and, and what we can do to kind of support that in a safe way. Sure, sure. So we, we all love play and we know the benefits of play, that it really is children exploring themselves and the world around them and taking things to the next level. Uh, there's lots of learning that goes on uh, and in all different ways. And we want to support that. And so all, all, everyone who's watching this, you know, we're all kind of on the same boat with that. But play and children, you, may, you just put children out in an environment and there's going to be risky things going on, right? And, and part of the reason for that is because, right, they're growing. They are always going to the next level, the next level, the next level, the next level. I mean, that's what we want for children and that's what we want for childhood, of course. And so a lot of that is testing their limits, right? If we think there's this continuum that they're constantly like, they might not be able to do something like balance on a log and then they practice a little, maybe they fall and they practice and then they can do it. You know, we, 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 there are all these rite of passages we hear about in different play areas and backyards, whether it's, you know, the, the monkey bars or the bouncing on the log or who knows what, jumping off a big rock. And those things are, are very, they're very important for children's development because that is them finding out who they are, um, finding out what they can do, finding out that they can try things and maybe they'll fail, maybe they'll fall. But if we've done a good job as adults to remove hazards, truly dangerous things, then we can start to feel more comfortable to allow children to do that. Because when they, when they try something bouncing on that log and they fall, but they get back up and then later they try it again and they do it, that gives them this experience of like, oh, I can, I can try something that I've never tried before, or I can do something that I've been nervous about, or I can do something that I failed at before and try it again and do it. And that's one of the skills that we want, that kind of resiliency and, and esteem to try things because that, that could equate right to school and learning and reading and trying to make sense of these weird symbols, you know, that you've never seen before and they don't make sense. But if somewhere in the child's heart and memory and mind, they remember, oh, I, I fell, you know, it's, it's subconscious really, but I fell off this log, but I got back on and I can, I can do things that are a little, make me a little nervous and even try things I've never done, like reading. Yes. <laughs> yes. So there's that idea of building the child up to know that they can do things, but then it's also important that children have access to risk to be able to work on that part of themselves that decides they don't want to take a risk. I don't want to bounce on that log. I'm not ready to bounce on that log. That log looks wobbly or it looks like I could fall or I saw Jimmy fall. So I don't want, you know, I don't want to do that. And that's the skill. That's like the lifelong skill that's, that's w within us all that, that, that part, that sense, the, the inner knowing, the inner guidance to, to say yes to something and to say no to something. Absolutely. Well, and it's beautiful because you're building that self-confidence, but mostly that self-awareness, right? So, yeah. you know, I'll try and maybe I'll try again versus I can't, you know, and I see that a lot in the early learning years where they've just given up on themselves because there's too many do it this way, do it that way. They can't yeah. really think for themselves or that trial and error to learn those problem solving techniques, but that awareness to say, hands up, well, that's a red flag. Yeah. I'm actually not going to proceed that way and then it gives the educator or parent an opportunity to talk about that right and maybe acknowledge that there's a fear there but you know what what is that underlining um awareness right so mm -hmm. very very beautiful so where can our listeners find you ah yes well rustykeeler.com i have a website and i'm on facebook and twitter and Instagram and I have Pinterest boards and all that kind of stuff. So I'm all over the place. And yeah, I work with people to design, design environments. I have online classes about risky play and natural playscape design, how to bring nature into your yards and um, okay. all sorts of fun stuff. And YouTube. Yeah. And YouTube. <laughs> That's right. YouTube. I have some videos about backyard. I take you through my own crazy, messy, wild 
loose part backyard. I felt I, like I connected with you before we even met because I was watching uh, the videos. I'm like, oh, Rusty. There so it we'll is. Post links below so everybody can find oh, you. Um, okay. If you can talk a little bit about um, the resource that you're providing and loop it into talking about the new book as well, we'd love to learn. Sure, about that. sure. Mm -hmm. Let me grab that right here. Okay. Sorry. No, it's all good. Yeah. So the, the resource uh, is 20 ways to create outdoor play environments for the soul. And so when I think about children's environments and especially natural environments, I feel like a children's outdoor space is sacred space. And, and so what can we put in there? What do we as adults put in there that will connect them to nature, that will celebrate the seasons, that will be their place of memories, of, of some conscious atmosphere and emotions. And so how do we create beautiful, enticing, know environments so this resource really is kind of looking at that of like how do we create a natural play space uh and that's for the soul that really that the yeah. goes deep and yeah so i walk people through things to add like hills and sound elements and water and loose parts and um 20 great ideas that people can start doing on for any yard any budget just to start that's doing great. it yeah taking small steps and I love the, the recyclable items too, right? It doesn't need to be this like robust area. It's just bringing in those natural elements to connect with earth. It just, I love it. It speaks to me. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's funny because, so the, the play environments for the soul, uh, that kind of is, that was a, a part of my first book, Natural Playscapes. And that was about creating beautiful spaces for, you know, contacting children with nature, gardens and flowers and plants and pathways and very romantic book. And then my new book, Adventures in Risky Play, is a totally different aesthetic. <laughs> it, it's, it's like a ooh book. Like what? Uh, I mean, okay, so it's, it, it's, me it's more like a messy thing. Yeah, there's chickens. I'll just start, I always just start off, it's got chickens in it, but it's really then looking at the idea of, it's still environments for the soul, but it's really looking at then the, the caregiver. It's really the adult. You know, I think about the first book is like, how do we change our outside environments? Mm -hmm. This book is more, how do we as adults look, reflect on our own in, inner environments? And when do we say yes to children's play? And when do we say no? And I say that whenever I see, there's all sorts of amazing play in here, kids doing amazing things. And I get so excited about seeing great play. But what this book also celebrates, and it points out that that play happens, it's almost sadly, because adults didn't say no. Yes. Adults are saying yes to play. We want to say yes to play. We want to say yes to play. So the kids play and they want to play all the time. They want to go for it. So it's often up to us. And then when do we say yes? When do we say no? And, and why? Beautiful. Yeah. 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 So, well, and, so and like you say, a lot of the times it's our own upbringing and yeah. our own limiting yeah. beliefs and fear. So stripping it back and play with the children, right? Mm -hmm. Where, mm -hmm. you know, I, I do a lot of the work that I do because I love to play. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and hearing about your, you've got so much passion behind it when you sit there and you explain. And, you know, I can really sense that, that passion inside. So I want to, I want to share appreciation to that. And, and really, you know, thanking you for taking the time to, to speak with us about it, because it really, truly, you know, children can play if we mm -hmm. let them, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, is there any last thought that your comment that you want to leave our listeners with today before we wrap up? Um, you know, I, I, the book is filled with all sorts of things of like kids, you know, in climbing in trees and being barefoot and in mud and with fire and all that kind of stuff. But that's not necessarily the goal. The, people don't have to think that they're going to go and let kids with saws and hammers and all that kind of stuff. You, we can get there. But the idea is to start small. And what's the first yes that we could try a little bit more, especially in this time of, you know, global pandemic and stress and all this. We need ways that we can relax, all take deep breaths and be good to ourselves as adults maybe relax a little bit and pass that on to the children. And I think letting them play, letting them have that kind of natural play. And then how can we relax a little bit and learn to say yes more and watch. And, and I'll just say a good tip, 
technique is you know when we see that kid on the log balancing and we think oh my gosh these bad things could happen our, our old way of thinking would be like i want to step forward and stop it but i challenge i want to challenge people to have a new knee-jerk reaction when you see something like that instead of stepping forward step back close your mouth Hold count your one 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 thousand two one thousand and first just watch and watch what's what are the children doing and are they okay? You'll know right away if something really is about to happen that's bad, or is it just our imagination? And watch what they're doing and what they're intending to do on that log or with a stick. And, you know, maybe it's not the, the fear stuff. So watch what they're doing. And more often than not, children are okay. And it, to remember that children have that inner yes and no and that inner knowing too. And we want to self-regulate ourselves as adults to let them start to use that part of themselves to be able to regulate their play. So I would just say like in this time to how we take deep breaths and starting small with this, you don't have to go all the way to the hammer and saw, start <laughs> small. What's the first yes that you can do and what could Absolutely. it be? Yeah. Beautifully said. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today, Rusty. And uh, if there's any way we can support you and help you in the future, let us know. We're definitely rooting for you. And I look forward to uh, checking out your book soon. All right. Thanks so Thanks. much. So, all right. Bye. Bye.